Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SWAS MLB Thursday doing Braves Orioles in this video, but we'll talk about every single game on the board during the live show tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. If you're able to make it, would love to see in the comments. Uh, as far as Wednesday, man, it's off to a rough start. Uh, only one game is finished, and then and I lost, so I'm not going to say it's, it's a bad day yet, but it's definitely not looking great. Looking like it might be back-to-back -back losing days. Hopefully, while I'm recording this and making these videos, things turn around for me, but looking like going to be back-to-back -back red days for me. Uh, but yeah, Braves, Orioles, let's go. Welcome to the Swiss. The Swiss. Swiss. Hey, get the Swiss. All right, like I said, Atlanta's on the road in Baltimore. O's are short home favorites here, minus 115, total sitting at eight and a half. We got Reynaldo Lopez pitching for the Braves, Cole Irvin on the mound for Baltimore. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet, and according to the model, we got a slight lead on the O's, both in the first five and full game, 2.57 to 2.75 after five innings, 4.18 to 4.86 final score. All right, so let's take a look at this matchup, and we'll start with some numbers from Cole Irvin. Uh, 297 ERA and 120 whip. Definitely having a great season. 417 it's, uh, expected FIP indicates he's had some good luck, but no doubt can't take any credit away from him. He's been pitching well. That being said, his last four starts, we are seeing the production drop a little bit. His last four starts, a 148 whip. It's a decent amount of base runners. ERA still sitting at 310, so he's, they're not getting around. They're not scoring, but he is allowing significantly more base runners as of late. And if you take a look at the game logs, it's not like he's seeing dangerous lineups. Tampa back-to-back, -back, Boston, St. Louis. I mean, this isn't exactly murderer's row when it comes to lineups against lefties. Uh, so Cole, Cole Irvin's production definitely coming down a little bit. Uh, but good news. He's matched up against Atlanta, and they aren't hitting for shit. In the last 30 days, 23rd in WRC+, plus, 22nd in OPS, 24th in WOBA. In the last 14 days, even worse than that. In the last seven days, even worse than that. No, they're not hitting on the road. In the last 30 days, 27th across the board. In the last 14 days, dead last. They're not hitting lefties either. In the last 30 days, 22nd across the board. In the last 14, last seven, even worse than that. The last five lefty starters to pitch against the Braves combined for an 095 whip. So the Braves are not getting anybody on base against lefty starters as of late. And if you take a look at the game logs and look at who those lefty starters are, I mean... They didn't get to Mackenzie Gore. They didn't get to Mitchell Parker. They didn't really get to J.P. Sears. I mean, he went seven innings in the game. Didn't really get to Mackenzie Gore. Didn't really get to Mitchell Parker again. Martin Perez, back on May 26th. That's the last time the Braves got to a lefty, but they only scored one run. I mean, it was only three innings. Uh, before that, Bailey Falter. Uh, Braves haven't gotten to a lefty starting as a starter in uh, quite a while now. So overall, even though Cole Irvin definitely isn't pitching as well right now as he was earlier in the season, I still think this is a perfect spot for him to deal. I mean, the Braves are not hitting lefties as we just saw. So Cole Irvin should pitch fine in this game. On the other side, we got Reynaldo Lopez, and he's been pitching really well. He's got a 185 ERA and a 109 whip on the season. Last three starts hasn't really slowed down, 270 to 114. If you take a look at his game logs, though, you can see that He's had some easy competition, not trying to take anything away from him, but Washington, Oakland, Pittsburgh, San Diego, Cubs, Red Sox, Mariners. I mean, these are some easy lineups. And again, he's been great, not trying to discredit him at all, but he's definitely pitched against some easy lineups. One lineup that's definitely not an easy lineup, Baltimore Orioles. I mean, one of the best lineups in baseball in the last 30 days, second in WRC+, plus, second in OPS, second in WOBA. Same thing in the last 14 days, last seven days. Elite against righties, as we know, in the last 30 days, third, second, and third. Second, first, and second in the last 14 days. Uh, the last four righty starters to pitch against the Orioles, actually, 491 ERA and a 132 whip. So, yeah, the last four righty starters, maybe you could find a little bit of value, but look when we expand the sample size. The last nine righty starters, 689 ERA. Last 16 righty starters, 661 ERA. So Baltimore scoring runs on righty starters without a doubt. Here are the game logs here. They got to Pepio. They got to Littell. Didn't really get to Taj Bradley. But Taj Bradley actually pitched a good game against them. Uh, but they got to Savale. Got to Jose Barrios. Got to Bowden Francis. Got to Kevin Gosman. I mean, they get to everybody. Baltimore, one of the best lineups in baseball. And they hit well at home. They also hit well on the road. But here are their numbers at home in Camden. On the season, this is a top five, top six lineup at home. Last 30 days, fourth, fifth, and fifth. And to make matters even worse for Reynaldo Lopez here... He struggles against lefty bats. 
You can see his numbers against righty bats, absolutely elite. An 080 whip, 230 Woba on the season. He's dominant against righty bats, but against lefties, his, number look, his numbers look a lot more vulnerable. 298 Woba, 138 whip. Baltimore's got a lefty heavy lineup. One, two, three, four, five, six lefties projected to be in the lineup for the O's, including four of their first five hitters. Yeah, this is definitely a dangerous spot for Reynaldo Lopez. And then look at his pitch mix. In the last 30 days, the, the Orioles are fourth, first, and seventh against the four-seam fastball, the slider, and the curveball. Those are the only three pitches that Reynaldo Lopez throws. So, yeah, this is a scary situation for Lopez. That being said, if you are looking to back the Braves here, you can point at the fact that Lopez has pitched well when he's seen good lineups. Uh, on the season, he's thrown 12 and a third innings pitched against top 10 lineups versus righties. He actually has great numbers. 146 ERA and 090, uh, 089 whip and a 321 expected fit. So he's pitched really well when he's seen top lineups. And the Orioles have weirdly struggled against righties that walk a lot of guys. Reynaldo Lopez has a walk rate above 8%. Baltimore against righties that fit that description. 21st, 17th, and 18th. So against righties that walk a lot of guys, Baltimore actually hasn't been that dangerous. That one's razor thin, but thought it was interesting enough to include. Overall, as good as Reynaldo Lopez has been, I can't trust him on the road in Baltimore here. Just can't do it. As far as the bullpen matchup, Edge definitely goes to the O's. Uh, Baltimore in the last 14 days has had one of the best bullpens in baseball on the season. This is definitely a top 10 bullpen. Um, Braves, not that the Braves bullpen has been terrible, but they're pretty average. Offensively against bullpen, shocker, Edge goes to the O's again. Baltimore's been a top five lineup all season, getting to opponents' bullpens. Braves average to below average in the last 30 days. As far as bullpen usage, I thought the O's were going to be cooked here, but I took a closer look, and it's really not that bad. Um, in today's game, they used Kimbrel, Aiken, and Tate. So most likely, Kimbrel's not going to be available. Um, cause that, eh, that'll be two of the last three for him, but they got Cano rested. They got Perez, uh, rested. They got Webb rested. So I actually think the Orioles bullpen will be in decent shape, a little tax, but not nearly as bad as I thought. So as far as the bet, I don't see any reason not to go right back to Baltimore at this short price. And maybe if they had to travel after this, like the spot the Yankees are in, and I'll talk about that in the Yankees video, um, the Yankees are in a bit of a weird getaway spot. It's not the case with Baltimore. They start another home series after that against, against Philadelphia. So they don't have to travel. It's not like tomorrow's game is any more important than this one. Doesn't seem like any sort of a weird flat spot for Baltimore. So I would go right back to the O's here at minus 115. Baltimore money line. Oh yeah, and live show, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. We'll go through every single game on the board if you're able to make it. Love to see in the comments. Top bets posted on kylecurms.com. If you subscribe to Sauce Network Plus, all of that. Check it out if you're interested. Have yourselves a good one. Hopefully we bounce back, man. So it's, just, it's in the books. I officially had back-to-back -back losing days. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, shit, it happens. Ah, a little, couple of little frustrating losses there, but it's all right. Shake it off, bounce back on Thursday. Remember to bet responsibly. I'll talk to you in the Discord.